Welcome, everyone. I'm Judy Singer. I'm the Senior Vice Provost for Faculty Development and Diversity, and I want to welcome you all to this year's new Faculty Institute. We have faculty from all across Harvard represented here, and one of the great missions of the President and Provost's office is to make this one Harvard, to make this one university where people feel not only part of their local neighborhoods, because one of the great things about Harvard is your local schools are your immediate neighborhood, but you also should feel part of this larger community. And we host events throughout the academic year to bring together people uh, so you get a chance to talk to people you might not run into, learn more about the university, and get a sense of how you can be part of Harvard. We're very privileged this afternoon to have uh, President Drew Faust with us uh, who is going to make a few opening remarks. I think it's safe to say Drew doesn't need a long introduction, so I will yield the floor over to her. But she's very interested in ask, answering questions that you may have. So I encourage you as she's talking to think about questions you might actually like to ask your new president. Uh, she's not so new, but you are. Uh, so uh, with that, I will turn it over to Drew. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. So I'll do that. Um, I want to begin by welcoming you and saying how thrilled we are that you're here. You represent a lot of deliberation and assessment and conversation and evaluation. And so we're always so pleased when searches yield actual humans who. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, actual humans who then are our colleagues and our associates and our inspiration for the years ahead. I want to build on what Judy said a bit at the outset, which is one of the aspects of Harvard that I hope you won't ignore or not have time to take advantage of is the distributed excellence and scale across the university. You are in neighborhoods, you're in departments, you're in programs, you're in schools, and they will ask a lot of you, and those will be your most immediate colleagues. But one of the aspects of Harvard that I think is very special and that I hope you will find enriching of your own intellectual and social lives is the wide range of um, fields represented, of excellences represented, of points of view, of resources, the different kinds of libraries, collections across the whole campus, and of course, the richness of the resource of colleagues in so many different fields. I was just having a conversation this morning with one of my colleagues in Mass Hall about all the work that's going on on inequality across Mass Hall. Mass Hall is actually the oldest building on the Harvard campus. It was built in the early 18th century. John Adams lived there as an undergraduate. It was a hospital during the Revolutionary War. It's now where I am the provost and our staffs, or at least some of our staffs, uh, hang out. And so I hope one day you will have a chance to come and introduce yourselves and that I will get to know uh, many of you better. But as I was talking to a colleague in Mass Hall this morning about the work on inequality that's going on across the university. Every school has extraordinary people exploring different dimensions of this question. So if you are interested in that, or really almost anything else, think about colleagues elsewhere and programs and seminars and activities elsewhere across the university that can help you stretch, look at your work in new ways, as well as continue to do the excellent work that has brought you here in the first place. Judy talked about One Harvard. This is something that has been a big commitment of mine because I realized soon after I arrived here in 2001 that there were so many people across the universe who didn't even know about one another, much less have the opportunity to take advantage of the insights and work and um, colleagueship of one another across the university. So I hope you will take the opportunity to go to a seminar or travel to a colloquium or reach out to a potential colleague who is not in your immediate neighborhood because I think it will find it will you will find that it will enrich both your work and your life here at Harvard. So that's the first message um, that I'd like to send. The second is one that often surprises people about Harvard, which is we care a lot about teaching, and we talk a lot about teaching, and we do a lot about teaching. Uh, some of this happens through a university-wide organization. An acronym for it is HILT, um, Harvard Initiative in Learning and Teaching, 
which funds innovative ideas about teaching, experiments, has conferences, and people have found it an, a venue, an environment in which they can um, explore, uh, take new approaches to ideas that they've had about how to teach, and I think that has been very generative and supportive of new approaches to teaching that are made possible and enabled in part by the new digital tools available for teaching, in part by the new understanding of the operations of the brain that have expanded through our growing understanding of neuroscience, but also just ways in which colleagues working together can share their um, findings, share their insights, and make the experience of teaching more exciting for all of us. So I hope that you will look at, there'll be a conference that Hilt's having quite soon. Yes, it's Friday, it's next Friday. And so you'll probably get an email telling you about that. Just read it and see if maybe it interests you. You're probably very busy right now, but at some point you may find that this is something that will be um, attractive to you and something that can enable you to move forward a approach to your teaching that you would like to advance. We also, as you may know, have been involved in something called edX, which is a partnership with MIT to uh, undertake online learning. And we have produced uh, a variety of courses through our own element of that, which is HarvardX. That's what produces the content here. And with Harvard uh, faculty and Harvard intellectual endeavor. And we have been uh, involved with that from the start with three goals. One is to make the learning that Harvard shares on its campus widely available around the world. And a lot of faculty have been so excited to share their teaching, not simply with a group of students who come to campus, but with people in the most remote corners of the world who otherwise wouldn't have access to it. I was delighted early on in the um, Harvard X endeavor to interact with two faculty members at the School of Public Health who were teaching a basic public health tool of epidemiology as an um, online course. And they, in one year, taught more students than they taught in their entire career and made available to 9,000 students in India, to thousands of students in other parts of the world, desperate for more knowledge about public health, the kind of intellectual resources that previously we'd only been able to share in the School of Public Health here on site. Another interesting aspect about uh, Harvard X that may intrigue some of you is, as we did an analysis after three years of the program, we found that a large portion of those taking these courses are teachers. So it's a kind of pass it along, each one teach one, that teachers were using these courses as a way to enhance their own practice uh, around the globe. And that seemed a very kind of noble undertaking for people to commit themselves to. So the first goal was to share more widely. The second goal was to improve our own teaching on our campus. So a lot of the experiments that we've done with Harvard X have had implications that people have adopted in their own courses here. How to use digital modules, perhaps, to explain a difficult concept that uh, needs to be understood in a variety of fields. If you've got the, somebody who just can teach probability really, really well, or some dimension of probability really, really well, why not just use that module? if you're in, in a field that's not going to use, that's going to use probability, but that's not your basic thing. So how do we think about the advantages in teaching that can be gained from our experiments um, in Harvard X? And then the third element is one that um, we're seeing increasing payoff from, which is when you teach these courses, you collect enormous amounts of data. And how can we make this data available to researchers who can learn about teaching from analyzing the data that we accumulate? So have an eye out for emails that no doubt will come your way and other kinds of messaging about Harvard X. Uh, even if you don't, I think this is something you at some point would want to do. You might be interested in you know, keying into some of the courses or looking at what's available. But it is another manifestation of the fact that I think you're going to encounter a lot of conversation on campus about teaching and a lot of efforts to support your commitment to your teaching and to enable you to accomplish what you hope to in a classroom setting with the knowledge and support and tools that are available here. So those are just two aspects of 
um, advice that I would like to offer and commitments that I think are essential to Harvard. The commitment of sharing across the campus itself and then the commitment to thinking about our teaching in ways that are innovative and exciting for not just for the students, but I think also for the faculty itself. As you can see, she is well-versed on issues all across the campus and, frankly, all across the globe. Um, and in, in fact, increasingly, our faculty do want to get out of the local zip code and into the world. The Vice Provost for um, International Affairs, Mark Elliott, has an annual conference uh, in the springtime to which you'll all be invited. And it's a good way to learn about what kinds of international activities uh, are taking place. I just want to make a, a few remarks that set the context for today's panels, and then also do a sort of speed date, one minute, not even one minute, one nanosecond introduction around the room so you at least have some sense of who else is in the room so that on the breaks, if there are people who are doing work that uh, dovetails with your own work, uh, you should make a, a point of going up to that individual, and similarly at the reception afterwards. Uh, we started doing these uh, events uh, when, frankly, I started as senior vice provost. Um, I started as a, an assistant professor at Harvard in 1984, uh, which is actually before some of you were born. Um, and when I started, there was nothing at the university level that brought people together. Uh, there was a, um, a session on health benefits, uh, and then you were just out on your own. And when I, when Drew asked me uh, to serve as senior vice provost, one of the things that I was deeply committed to was having the experience of new faculty, tenure track faculty, and tenured faculty really be part of the university and, and come together. And the spirit of today's panel, and in fact many of the questions that you're asking, um, are about how do you make your way around Harvard? It's a pretty big place. And, and, and as Drew said, it's not just the buses, although transportation is obviously an issue. How do you make your intellectual way around Harvard? How do you establish yourself as a, a Harvard faculty member and a member of this community? So we are going to have two panels uh, this afternoon. One is composed of uh, some associate professors, each of whom actually attended this a few years ago. So I'm very pleased to now see the continuity of people being on your side and then people being up here uh, in the front. And they're going to talk about their journey as as new faculty into now their associate professors here. Uh, have, have, they're not quite long in the tooth, but they do have some, uh, some experiences to share. And plus, they've been in your shoes. They've all been in the shoes of, of being new here and trying to figure out how to navigate their way. And the second panel is going to be some recently tenured faculty uh, who uh, I think now are taking on the stewardship responsibility that Khalil talked about, because once you're a tenured faculty member, we hope you'll stay here for the rest of your life. That's why we tenure you. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to talk about factors that were critical to their success, what resources across the university made a difference, the kind of questions that you were asking, and how to develop new collaborations.